Hi everybody, I'm Giancarlo. And I'm Felicia. And this is our review of... Uh, uh, e, uh, uh, torn, torn Armor, the Torn World, but like, it's the freaking Da Vinci Code. What? Look at it. Trying to like figure out, is this sword a T or... Torn Armor. Yeah, he's the freaking, look, he's freaking out on the box, hang on. Check this out. Yeah, he is freaking out on the box. He's like, ah! Oh my god, and then there's like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle in the middle of nowhere. And he just doesn't belong. <laughs> in Torn Armor, players take on to the battlefield as either the Sisk Empire or the Matians, creature of superior numbers and towering elementals to wage war against one another. In the box you'll find 8 double-sided battle mats, 12 stat cards, 39 cardboard miniatures, 25 dice, 5 for each of the 5 different colors, 8 magic item cards, 8 spell cards, 8 terrain hex tiles, and a rulebook scenario book. Meet the victory conditions of the scenario and you will win the battle in the mythical world of Torn. For this review we'll play the first scenario, Skirmish. Place the appropriate battle mat in the center of the table. Each player will choose an army. Then they'll have to come up with 75 gold pieces worth or less from what the army offers. Units are a must and maybe a spell or magical item would serve your strategy. The cost is listed on the back of the stat cards with how many miniatures are in that unit and on the cards themselves in the circular gold icon. Once chosen, players will roll for initiative by rolling 5 green combat dice. The player with the least will place one of his units first, then the next player will do so back and forth between the two until all units have been placed. You're now ready for war. Let's look at units and their stat cards. The back contains the cost and the background story if any. The front is where all the vital information is. The top left image is the factions. The numbers on the right side arranged in a column provide you with speed, armor, and health. At the bottom of the card, it will list if it's an infantry unit denoted by one arrow or an assault unit denoted by two hours. In the center, you'll have a list of weapons. It starts off with range if any and works its way down to melee. Next to the weapon's name is the quantity. The numbers next to that will denote how many dice you roll against armor and unit type. This number will be multiplied by the number of miniatures you have in that unit. The color of the dice matters as well as the probability of hitting increases in this order. White, green, blue, red, and black. Let's get into that when we do a combat example later on. When a player activates a unit, he has five choices. Move and attack, attack and move, move twice, which is called double time in the game, make a concentrated attack, or wait. When you move an attack or attack and move, check your speed and that unit may move up that many hexes. When you attack, you need to follow the order from top to bottom on your unit stat card. So ranged weapons will always be used before melee weapons. Using a ranged weapon, you'll need line of sight. This means that when drawing an imaginary line from the center of the hex your unit is in to the center of the hex of his intended target, it must be unhindered between those two units or you can't use the weapon. Remember to also make sure you are in the weapon's range. If a target is in a hex containing particular terrain, he'll be getting the cover's bonus when rolling for defense. For melee, you can attack an enemy in an adjacent space. They, however, get to do a counterattack of their own. This is a free action and can be done as many times as they are attacked. The initial attack and counterattack are done simultaneously. Double time simply means moving your unit twice. When moving, you need to take into consideration the terrain type. Some will cost more points to move into. Concentrated attack means once per unit activation, you may reroll any of your dice that missed. And wait simply means you don't do anything. This may be useful as some units can act on an opponent's turn. When a unit has finished activating, we turn its stat card sideways and it becomes exhausted. Then the other player activates a unit and we go back and forth until all units have acted this way. Then a new round begins. Players will roll for initiative by rolling 5 green dice again, and the player with the most hits will act first. Both players refresh all their cards by turning them right side up. Let's look at battle resolution. Each weapon can only be used on one unit at a time, so you can't split each attack for that particular weapon, but you can use your other weapons to attack another target. When attacking, look at your target's type and armor. 
cross-reference it on your stat card and you'll find color of dice you'll need to roll. The number will then be multiplied by the number of miniatures in the unit. For example, a full unit of Mew Slingers will roll 14 green dice against an infantry unit of Armor 1. This will give you a number of hits. Remember if you took the concentrated attack, you get to reroll all misses. Now the target gets to defend. He will roll a number of dice equal to the number of hits it sustained. The color will depend on the type of cover and or magic items and so forth he may have. Obviously though, the more defense you have, the more dice you roll to eliminate damage then damage is taken into account. Each hit must be removed from the unit. With infantry, it only takes one hit to remove one miniature. Mark the wounds on the stack card for both heroes and assault units as they have more health. Melee works the same way, but nobody benefits from cover. Remember also that the counterattack is done simultaneously, so apply all miniatures to unit's strength. If at the end of a round when all units have activated, a player meets the scenario objective, he wins. Let me start off by saying this game is exactly, and I mean exactly like Dust Tactics. I had to double check if it wasn't made by the same designer, and it's not. Small differences between the games is the colored dice, the fantasy theme, unit attachment cards, hexagon tiles instead of square, and the price. Torn armor is cheaper, but that's because in this version, you don't get plastic miniatures, but cardboard tokens instead. Theme is well represented with good looking art and is filled with lore in the rulebook, kind of like this tactic is for mechs. Now there's a lot of details we couldn't cover in Torn Armor so as to stay in our 10 minutes review format. These include flight, using range weapons and buildings and shooting out of them, and the many different abilities of all units as seen on these 5 pages in chapter 8. Couple that with the 8 double sided maps and you have a lot of variety, just like Dust Tactics. The game claims it's a gateway miniature game, and it is, and it can be versatile enough that experienced players can enjoy it as well. Funny, because Dust Tactics does the same thing. However, they could have done a couple of things differently to simplify it for new gamers wanting to explore miniature gaming. Since the game uses cardboard miniatures, unlike Dust Tactics, they could have printed the three primary stats, speed, armor, and health, on the cardboard minis themselves on the side. And though the rulebook is well written and reads faster than it looks, it doesn't have the quick reference in the back to make it easier for beginners like Dust Tactics has. We always needed to go back into the book to find what dice color to use for what ability and or cover. But the game does what it sets out to do. It's a quick miniatures game without the long hours needed to play it and is quite fun, like Dust Tactics. Now some of you might say it's unfair for us to compare it to Dust Tactics, but quite frankly, if you don't want to be compared to it, don't be exactly like it. To be fair, the Kickstarter campaign did mention Dust Tactics, but in regards to how they wanted to match their miniatures. They mentioned nothing on the exact rules and gameplay, or at least not that I noticed. And if they did, we apologize here at Board to Death. In the meantime, we'll give it a half point less for blatant plagiarism. Torn Armor scores 6.5 versions of Dust Tactics out of 10.